I hate Apple, dude. I would just never buy an Apple product. Well, why not? They're just, uh, they're so expensive. They cost so much, like $1,000 for a phone. You know, you don't have to buy the expensive iPhone. There's cheaper options out there. Yeah, but then they expect you to buy a watch and then they want you to buy the Mac and then they want you to buy the TV. Like you get roped into that ecosystem and then you're just spending all of this crazy money. You really don't have to. You can just build it the way you want to. <laughs> you know, I only paid like $500 for my Pixel 4a and that has been a decent $500, device. $500, huh? Is that all it takes for you to think you got a good deal? Yeah, I, I guess that's like half the price of a 14 Pro, right? What if I told you you could build out your own Apple ecosystem for just $500? Well, there's, there's no way it could be that good, right? I mean, what if I told you you can get a lot better experience for the same amount of money and get more hardware that lasts longer? I wouldn't believe you. That's fine then, I'll prove you wrong. Let's begin. So I think a lot of people raise their standards for what they expect hardware to do and where it comes from, and that basically prices them out of considering a lot of great hardware. So I know a lot of people are convinced the Apple ecosystem means that you have to have thousands and thousands of dollars invested, whereas the truth is, all of us people in the tech community that get excited about new iPhones or new Apple Watches, we're all just desperate for new stuff, and we have way too much money on our hands. We don't know what to do with all of it, so we blow it on tech, but that does not mean that older tech or cheaper tech or even certified refurbished or renewed hardware is necessarily a bad buy. In fact, that's where your dollar gets the most amount of value. And I know a lot of people instantly write that off, right? They're like, well, if it's secondhand, I don't even want to consider it. I need to buy new. Even though there are 30-day return programs put in place on both eBay and Amazon and you can get full warranties through eBay certified refurbished and you get full warranties from Apple certified refurbished and if you're on a budget and the thing you don't like about Apple is just that it's so absurdly expensive to be inside of it. This is where I think you're truly missing out. You're literally paying extra to just ensure that you're the first owner and a lot of the time there's not that many advantages to being the first owner and even if you have to pay for a battery replacement after you get the phone, you're still saving hundreds of dollars opposed to buying it new. So the ecosystem you can kind of build out to as much as you want but in the Apple Sheep's pure definition, I don't think two Apple products is really enough to count as an ecosystem. System. To me, once you make the stretch to three, once you have three separate Apple devices all working together, all communicating, that's when you start having an ecosystem. And then, of course, based on what you need, you can build it out further and make it more expensive if you need it to. But I think the foundational work all starts with the iPhone. This is what most people buy. Smartphones consume the most amount of screen time compared to all other devices in most everyday people's lives. So that's why if you're trying to get really, really affordable here and build an ecosystem for around 500 bucks, I'm actually going to recommend going way back with the iPhone 10R. Now, I know that sounds dated to everybody watching these videos on their iPhone 14 Pro Max with one terabyte of storage, but if you're just talking about wanting to be in the ecosystem, wanting to experience iOS, then the iPhone 10R was a very solid year. It's still getting the latest iOS updates, and most people are in agreement with me that iOS 17 is likely to support all of the same devices that iOS 16 is currently on, which means that even even if you're buying an iPhone XR today, you're probably gonna get updates well into 2024. So close to the same amount of years of support as an Android phone would get. And in my opinion, the iOS updates are more noticeable and stand out a bit more than the Android year-over-year -year updates are. And the reason I specifically go back to the XR is because if you find them on eBay certified refurbished, you can actually get them for a little bit over $200. That is just an insanely good deal. And I was tempted to say the iPhone 11, but but I think either because of the dual camera or the night mode or the centered Apple logo, they charge a lot more for them. So both on eBay and on Amazon Renewed, iPhone 11s typically don't cost much less than $400. So with the emphasis being on budget friendly, the fact that you can get a Face ID equipped iPhone that still has gesture controls just like the newer iPhones do, still has wireless charging, still has a pretty decent camera. No, the night mode isn't there, but if that's that important to you, then I guess you can stretch the budget a little 
little bit higher up to the iPhone 11, but this actually got much better battery life as well than both the 10s and the 10s Max, and the fact that it's less than half the price of the iPhone SE 3 that Apple is selling today, that to me makes it a pretty compelling offer. I actually still know a lot of people in my personal life that are very happy with their iPhone 10 Rs. Battery life is good, design is pretty modern, it's comfortable in the hand. No, it's not an OLED display, but I don't think the general ownership experience of the 10R versus, you know, what people are buying today with the iPhone 13 or 14 is going to be that drastically different of an experience. When those people are spending, you know, $700 to $800 on their iPhone, you could spend like $200 on a 10R and get 80 to 90% of a similar experience. Then building out from that foundation, I think that most people, of course, are spending a lot of time on their phones these days. So to enhance that experience the most, I have to start next with the best iPhone accessory in the world, which is the Apple Watch. The good news is that Apple finally killed off the Series 3, and no, I will never recommend that product under any circumstances. And luckily, I've been able to find on eBay through Certified Refurbished, which means full warranty, free returns if you don't like it or anything, but with high ratings and good reviews, you can buy an Apple Watch SE, which very much is like an Apple Watch Series 4. You get relatively thin bezels, a pretty sleek modern design, okay battery life, and it's under $200. That's right, for less money than what Apple was charging the Series 3 for, you can get an Apple Watch SE at a pretty reasonable price. And that way you can have your activity rings, notification management is a lot easier, you can switch to tactic feedback for more things so you don't have to use that stupid ringer switch all the time. Sorry, I'm gonna keep fighting you guys on that. But the Apple Watch is just such a smart, intuitive product. It can unlock future Macs in the future if you do want to expand your ecosystem further. It's so easy to charge, it just has that little inductive pad and it's very easy to set up and I feel like the iPhone plus Apple Watch experience is like peak and that's one of the primary reasons I would have a very hard time switching to Android because they just don't have a smartwatch experience that's as simple as intuitive and as responsive as watch OS is. Love the digital crown, love the activity rings and the notification management. So yeah, Apple Watch SE for sub $200, that's a pretty freaking good deal. Now to me it's not quite an ecosystem until you hit that magic number three and to keep things relatively affordable I'm starting off this ecosystem with with a budget of around $500. I'm gonna fudge up a little bit, but my next most common entry to the Apple ecosystem is AirPods. Like people are using them for FaceTime calls, they're listening to music, they're watching videos, and they don't wanna disturb those around them. And this one's a little bit harder to go secondhand with. You know, there was a lot of super cheap AirPods options I found on eBay or on Marketplace where you can find like pre-owned AirPods, but then you're kind of thinking about how much earwax do these things have in them. And hopefully you can find a good buyer for less, but I was able to find someone with high ratings and a certified refurbished warranty on eBay that was selling AirPods second generation, which means they have the H1 chip, but yes, they do have a very similar design to the original AirPods, but they were brand new sealed in the box. So you can get those through Apple for $130 on eBay. You can find them for a little bit cheaper, but that means for about 500 bucks, which is less or around the same price as a lot of common Android phones these days, you can be on iOS with the iPhone 10R, have an Apple Watch SE, and have AirPods, and now these devices can all start working together. And that's where I think the ecosystem really starts to shine, because you can be listening to music on your iPhone, appreciating that clean UI and the latest version of iOS, and you can leave that phone in your pocket and skip songs or pause music from your Apple Watch and adjust the volume through the digital crown, so you don't have to adjust any remote or anything, but those two wearables along with an iPhone, I think is really what gets people to fall in love with the ecosystem. So $500 is a pretty decent starting place. But of course, as you guys know, there's much more to the ecosystem, especially if you're the type of person that needs a computer or a laptop or just a bigger display in general. Now it's obviously going to go well over $500, but I'm still going to recommend the renewed or refurbished route. Like for example, you can find really good condition M1 MacBook Airs on eBay for close to $700. And to me, that's one of the best deals in like all-in-one Mac territory of all time because yeah you can get a Mac mini for cheaper assuming you have a keyboard and mouse if you're the type of person that already has a PC but it's getting kind of old and you're ready to make the switch to Mac OS then sure you can find some refurbished Mac minis for around $500 maybe less but that's assuming you already have all of that hardware plus the Mac mini is just going to be restricted to your desk if you're a student or you plan on using your laptop on the go a lot then being able to find like a $700 MacBook Air that has great battery life and honestly the M1 chip is still very very capable that's going to be an incredible deal and even after sales tax
Max be sub $800. And again, there's good reviews on that product. So I'm not going to push the M2 MacBook Air or the 14 inch MacBook Pro if the goal is just how cheap can the Apple ecosystem be. But similarly, if you really like listening to music, then the HomePod Mini people have actually been able to find on eBay that is basically a new condition for around 60 bucks, not much more than a Google Nest Mini, and it sounds substantially better. So if audio quality is your thing, then I guess you could couple, you know, Apple Music Voice Plan, which is only five bucks a month, with your HomePod, and now you're listening to music from your iPhone, your Apple Watch, and your AirPods. That's a pretty strong ecosystem there too. And if you're looking for cheap ways, because, you know, Mac and iPads are gonna cost a bit more, to expand your ecosystem, then the Apple TV has recently gotten pretty affordable. And if you follow pages like 9to5toys, you can typically find like last year's Apple TV, even the 4K model, for like a hundred bucks, sometimes less. I even saw some people in our Discord recently that were picking up Apple TV HDs, so maybe you have an older TV and you don't care if it's 4K or not, but they were literally selling them with the updated Siri remote for like $59. So basically for the price of one Apple TV remote, you could also get an entire Apple TV. And then you have tvOS, sure it's not going to have the latest chip, you're not going to get Apple Music Sing, but you have another device with AirPlay connectivity and hopefully some kind of Apple TV Plus redemption plan. But yes, of course I saved iPads for last because I genuinely don't think anyone should really prioritize getting an iPad unless they have a very specific use case for them. All of my friends and family that got iPads used them a lot when they first got them, but then realized that it was just more convenient and not much harder to just keep using their iPhones. So like my parents just use their iPhones for everything and they leave their iPads somewhere in the closet or in the office that they don't touch them anymore because it's just so convenient to have one device that fits in your pocket for all of your apps and multitasking. Yeah, it's better on the iPad, but a lot of people love just being able to swipe back and forth with the home bar on the bottom of the iPhone. So unless you really need an Apple Pencil in note-taking capability, I'm gonna say try to build an ecosystem without the iPad because it's probably just gonna disappoint you. But if you absolutely really need an iPad, then I guess you could consider the iPad 10th test. <laughs> No, no. Oh my god, sorry. I thought I could keep that joke going a little bit longer. However, if you want a really good deal on iPads, then yes, you can even find 2018 iPad Pros on Amazon and on eBay refurbished in pretty great condition for like 500 bucks, sometimes even less than that. If you don't care about having 120 hertz, then finding an old iPad Air 4 is probably the cheapest way to get an iPad that still has like the new design with USB-C and Apple Pencil 2 support, which in my opinion should be the only Apple Pencil if you're really, really on a budget, then I guess you can find the iPad 9th generation for sale for sub $300. That's going to be really affordable, but you're also going to have a lightning connector, a home button, which I guess if you're on a budget isn't the end of the world. I just really don't care for the Apple Pencil 1, which yes, even the Apple Pencil you can find on sale. But in my opinion, you're watching this at the end of 2022 or 2023. In those years, you don't want to be using an Apple Pencil 1. So if you're the type of person watching this and you're just like, nope, we'll never consider a refurbished or renewed product. I need to be the first owner. Well, just realize you're paying a huge premium to ensure that you are the first owner. However, that's also very easy to do. You want me to build out a competitive ecosystem? If you can only buy brand new, you're talking about products you can only buy when you walk right into the Apple store, then okay, yeah, buy the iPad 9, buy the iPhone SE 3, buy the AirPods 2, and buy an M1 MacBook Air, I guess. But you're gonna be paying like $2,000 compared to what I was pitching and in my opinion, the iPhone XR, even though it doesn't have 5G and it doesn't have the A15 chip, I think the iPhone XR is closer to the flagship experience that we're getting today than the iPhone SE 3 is. And frankly, if you're looking at anywhere to splurge, you can find AirPods Pro 2 refurbished on eBay for sub $200. And AirPods Pro 2 are just an incredibly great product. Like the audio quality is excellent, noise cancellation, transparency mode is really good, the battery life is fantastic, especially if you couple that with an Apple Apple Watch because that means you'll have a little charge puck that can charge your watch or your AirPods. I'm tempted to stretch the budget of the three product Apple ecosystem just to include an AirPods Pro 2 pair because that is such an incredibly great product and I think the AirPods Pro experience is so magical that helps you immerse yourself deeper into the walled garden which you cannot escape from. The other more cost effective thing you could do is try to guilt trip your parents into making them buy you stuff for Christmas but that dips into the ethical argument a little bit so we don't need to to go there. 
but gifts, you know, usually are a good way to uh, make the ecosystem a little bit easier to enter. And if people are asking you what you want for your birthday or Christmas and you just send them some refurbished eBay listings, then they'll be like, oh, I don't have to buy them like a $1,000 phone. I can just buy them like a $200 pair of AirPods or $200 iPhone. That's a lot more digestible, I guess. But this video is getting weird, so I'm going to wrap it up now. And thank you once again to everybody supporting this channel directly on Talos of Tech Pro. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you all in the next one.